In the 10th century, from Byzantium to Russia, appeared the amazing art of painting on enamel, finift, or the art of fire writing. Russian jewelers mastered this new technique and began to decorate icons and church books with it. Later, this art entered the everyday life of Russians and found application in women's jewelry, cutlery, figurines, boxes, watches, and snuff boxes. Ignorant people believed that the enamel was produced from molten gems, so beautiful and bright it was. Enamel made by skilled craftsmen appreciated in Russia on a par with gold and silver. The traditional process of making enamel developed in the 17th century. It consists of three stages. First, the master prepares a white enamel base, then applies a design, and finally inserts the product into its frame. The base material is cut from a sheet of copper then a layer of ground glass powder is applied to the metal. The workpiece is sent to the furnace and the result is a smooth white surface. The reverse side is covered with a glass compound so that the plate is not deformed during firing. In this form the blank arrives in the artist's hands. On the convex glass part are drawn miniature images and decorations with fire resistant paints made of vitreous powder. The technique is complex and consists of several stages. The craftsman outlines the overall design of the image, sends the product to the oven, cools it, then adds the fine details as well as new colors. Each layer of paint is fired at a temperature of about 700 to 800 degrees Celsius. Usually items require up to three firings, but some subjects require as many as five. The paint melts in the oven resulting in a shiny, glossy surface that does not need additional work. The repeated firing of products in the furnace gave the art of enamel its second name, fire writing. Applying this technology requires skill. It is impossible to correct the design applied to the enamel, so one wrong movement of the brush could ruin the entire work, and the pigments themselves change color in the furnace. If you make a mistake with the temperature and time of firing, the artist's idea might not be realized. The finished finift is inserted into a frame made of silver or other metal. Often it was a filigree, a thin lace-like pattern made of wire. Filigree is also completely manual work that requires high skill. Enamel does not change color with age and easily tolerates humidity and high temperature. The only drawback to the product is its fragility. Large finished pieces need to be handled carefully, although small items remain fairly strong and can easily withstand some shocks. Precious stones could scratch the enamel layer, so the finished is kept separate from other jewelry. The main customer for a long time remained the Orthodox Church. The long-lasting, bright, and elegant miniatures decorated the frames of icons and the clothing of priests and pilgrims took with them from the monasteries small enamel images of saints for inspiration. In the 19th century, finift was increasingly used on jewelry caskets. City views and historical subjects were popular decorations for these items. Following this, women's jewelry and various household items in enamel began to be in great demand. Fashionable finift earrings and brooches have been popular with Russian beauties for more than 200 years. In the 1920s and 30s, the main themes of enamels were heroic victories in the Civil War and labor exploits of the Soviet people. A five-pointed star and the hammer and sickle appeared next to the traditional floral ornaments. Enamel and religious themes became out of date. Instead of icons, the masters painted the portraits of Lenin and Stalin. Artists have portrayed historical figures, famous scientists, and heroes. For example, in the 1960s, enamel with the image of Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin appeared. Today the craft of enamel in Russia is still developing. Many of the masters come from family enamel dynasties. They, as before, manually paint products. They carefully preserve the old traditions of painting and also create new drawings and decorations. 
Enamel can be found not only on the shelves of jewelry stores, but also in the collections of connoisseurs and museums.